Okay, I'm going to show you the Rotobrush tool in After Effects CS5. I'm just going to do a quick, easy um, tutorial. I'm really just going to show you how this works. So I have my Halo character here. I'm going to double click my layer. I'm going to go up here to my Roto Brush tool. Before we start, one thing I just noticed is that my, my timeline marker here is at one second. Well, my, the beginning of my footage that I'm trying to Roto out is starts at zero. I need to bring it to zero because if I start the Roto Brush tool, it's going to set a marker in my footage and it's going to propagate from that point. And I'll, I'm going to explain exactly what that means. So I'm going to set it to zero. And then I'm going to select my Roto Brush tool. Uh, you can see my marker is now green. Now, uh, for everybody who's done rotoscoping before, I'm sure the first thing you want you think of is you want to draw an outline around the body. This is not the case with the Roto Brush tool. You need to. It does best when you draw out like a skeleton from the center of the object you want to isolate. So I'm going to draw. like that so it has the leg and then I'm gonna go to the other leg I'm gonna go neck to arm I'm gonna do arm again and then I'm gonna do head okay so now you can see now what we'll do is is now we'll do some cleanup now we'll just do we'll get in there and get the rest all the missing points so do long strokes and that gives uh, that gives the brush tool um, a lot of information to work with okay so that's on one frame that's fairly decent that's okay so you can see here this is what I was talking about. This um, it creates like a keyframe here. And if we had started our brush tool over here, you know, the keyframe would have been started over here, and then it would have to propagate this way to left and right, forward in time and back in time. And you still don't know what propagate is? Well, I'll show you in a minute. This right here is kind of like your in and out. It's gonna it's gonna propagate uh, backwards in time and forward in time. So I don't want it to go backward in time. I just want it to go where my marker is. So I'm gonna shorten that and I'm gonna lengthen this. Now what it's doing is now it's propagating. Now it's analyzing each frame from the original frame that we drew it's going to automatically create the strokes we need you can see it's um, propagating and once again if I had started over here maybe right here it would be going this way and that way so sometimes it's good to start in the middle because maybe that's the best maybe that's the best frame for reference but in this case I just wanted to start from zero because it's all the same he's just idle alright so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into our key comp and we're just going to check something it's going to have to propagate all the time so uh, you can see there's some it's messed up there and so what we can do is is we can kind of smooth out some of these lines here smooth out some of the lines do a little bit of feather you can even go um, negative choke and so on which actually we might do okay so you can see here now you know obviously you have this line out and you have issues here but that was pretty quick didn't do a bad job there's a lot of tweaks you can do obviously we have to tweak a lot of stuff but one thing I needed to show you is um, in order for us not to have to propagate is we hit the freeze button and the freeze button will lock it and uh, cache it so it will lock down the strokes we did and no changes can be made to it until you unlock it so what we're gonna do is is we're gonna freeze our footage we're gonna hit the freeze uh, 
button that cache and lock segmentation for rotobrush so that's going to lock it down so we cannot make any changes to it this is going to help us by um, every time we move in the timeline or or whatnot the it's not going to have to propagate all the time so if this was unfrozen right now and I left it right there it'd have to propagate and do all the calculations over again this is why we freeze it it's pretty decent for on the fly type stuff see all the work you have to do it uh, yeah and if you want to add masks and so on onto it make sure you pre-compose your layer first and that's it that I mean it's I just wanted to show you guys how the possibilities with it and uh, some simple function with it